Hey, what's going on guys? Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Today I'm breaking down the backhand technique of Novak Djokovic from the side view and the back view. I'm gonna talk about the key technical elements to that stroke that can help you improve your own two-handed backhand. If you wanna find out what those keys are, stay tuned. It's coming up next. All right, guys, let's jump in. We don't want to waste any time with this analysis, right? Djokovic here on the left side and then Djokovic here on the back. We've got court level tennis. Check out that YouTube channel over here on the right side. So make sure you support the YouTube channels that are helping to provide this footage. So again, Djokovic here left and then Djokovic here from the back view. So two simultaneous views. Let's go ahead and let's break down this technique here. First things first, right? Look at the starting position like we noted with the forehand video here a little bit too. Just look at the starting position. We've got the left hand on the throat of the racket in a very high position. Djokovic holds this position when he's waiting for ground strokes, but when he's waiting for return of serves, he will have the left hand here down on the handle of the racket because the difference in receiving on the speed. You cannot see that ready position here on the right side, but we've got a little gap here with our right elbow in case it's a forehand, right? And then we've also got some other interesting things that we can work on with of the split step. This is such a common problem that I see on the court every single day, but get your feet past shoulder width apart. Make sure you have a nice wide base when you're getting ready for a forehand or backhand. And then from there, you guys, we're just gonna look at this a little bit. Look at the twist move he performs on the left here as he realizes it's now a backhand. So he kind of holds a little bit more of a forehand grip here we can kind of zoom in and see that a little bit, right? It's loosely a forehand. And then from there, he actually twists and slides the racket and gets it into this backhand position where the strings are kind of angled and a little bit forward from this position here. So things are a little bit different than they were, right? He makes that move so fast in real time that you really can't tell that he's doing it. But again, he makes that move and makes his split and then he's got the racket ready to go. A couple really good things from Djokovic's backhand that we can learn, right, this guy has an incredible two-handed backhand. Racket here already, the racket head, he puts it to the left side of the hitting hands. So his hitting hands are here, and he sets the racket up on the left side of the hitting hands, right? He starts to really turn his upper body here. He's got almost a 90-degree turn on the left side of the screen right here at this point. And the racket head, you guys, is above his hitting hands. So here are the hands, and there is the racket head. So he just gets it above the hands as he brings it back. And then from here, we start to notice some other good and fine details. Number one, look at the right side of the screen, right? We've got this nice full coil of the body. The belly button is pointed off to his left here, chest also off to the left. He's turned a little bit past 90 degrees, and at this point, his chin is overlooking his front shoulder right there. So his chin over the front shoulder. Racket head at this point for Novak still a little bit to the left side of the hitting hands, right? And in this particular case, he's either gonna be stepping in or across on both of these back hands. And then another thing that we notice, right, in these particular balls, regardless of contact height for the moment, the tip of his racket head does reach at least to around head height on a lot of his backhands, unless it's a really low ball. The height of the take back can be determined quite a bit by the incoming ball height. But here too, look at the tip of the racket here is definitely above his head on this particular ball. Another thing that I pointed out years ago that I do think is really important because some people don't perform this. If you want to hit good topspin on your two-handed backhand, it is key to have a little bit of a tilt of your shoulders at an angle down like this. Now you don't necessarily need to intentionally tilt your shoulders, but all you really wanna do is get your chin to point and look over the front shoulder, and that will usually cause this tilting to happen. But I've seen a lot of people, especially at the recreational level or lower levels, where the shoulders are kinda of straight across, and then they hit the ball very, very flat. If you look at the top pros, right, 99% of these folks will have a little bit of a tilt of the shoulders in that downward angle. And you can see it's even more pronounced when Djokovic goes from this position and finishes his turn. Again, front shoulder is lower than the back shoulder because we're looking over that shoulder with our chin at this point. We're also now looking down at the incoming ball, right, and kind of looking at contact. We also have our hip, right hip here, completely squared off at this point. And then just from here, you guys, we see a couple things, right? The right arm right here is pretty much completely straight at this point. The left arm is still kind of bent, almost in a 90, close to a 90, but bent. So we see that position in both of our videos. 
And then from here, we really need to relax the arms, right? Relax, and then look at the left arm. The left arm has gone from this bent position right here, and the arm configurations can vary from player to player, but Djokovic gets below the ball by relaxing the right wrist here. You can see that right wrist relaxes, and then this left arm ends up getting completely straight right here. We can see that in both images, right? The right wrist relaxes. We see that pretty clearly right here. We see that pretty clearly right here. And then that left arm straightens to get the racket to go below the ball. And we really want to keep the arms from this position, everybody. We really want to keep the arms relaxed. And again, in Djokovic's situation, he's getting the left arm straight to help get the racket below the hitting hands. So easier said than done on a two-hander, but the racket comes from the outside here. As the arms straighten, especially the left arm straightens there, it gets the tip of the racket now below the incoming ball. So we have an incline to the ball that'll help us to create topspin or a low to high swing. So we go from here and then tip below the ball. We're still fairly relaxed with that right wrist. And then we come out to contact right here in both images. Some things that we notice at contact that are really, really important. For the most part, we wanna to try to keep our head to keep our balance, keep it roughly over our hips the best that we can, right? We don't wanna see the head leaning way out here. As an example, I would lose my balance if I was out there. Might be more of a defensive shot. But some other really important things that we can notice at contact, look at the space between his two feet. Nice wide base at this point. The weight has been transferred from the back leg here, right, from this foot to more of the front foot on these particular backhands that he's hitting. He still has a little bit of a bend even in that front leg, but we came from even a little bit more of a bent position and had a tiny bit of straightening there of that front leg. And then from here, contact is for Djokovic on this one, pretty well in front of his front foot. And his hitting arm combination still has his left arm straight, and his right arm has a slight bend to it instead of being completely straight. This is probably the most common hitting arm combination on tour for the men. And then another thing that we notice at this point as well, right? The contact point is in front for leverage. Got good leverage here. But also look at the hands on the left. I've pointed this out for years and years and years. If your hands are visible on the left side of your body at contact and there's a camera behind you, that means you're not jammed on your stroke and you don't want to be jammed on your stroke. So that's a really, really good thing. So we want to achieve this position right here where the hands are very visibly and clearly on the left side of the body at contact. And he does that. Another thing that I'm looking for in this situation too, right? Trying to get those racket strings at least straight up and down. If not, maybe even just a hair closed at contact in this position. And then from there, we're gonna notice again, one thing I talk about a lot with players and I see a big mistake at the junior level is they don't take the hands and drive through the shot. Watch his hands, let's see if they extend, and they do. Look at how far his hands extend out, you know, maybe six to eight inches at this point. As he really lifts the ball, yes, but he really drives the ball from contact and those hands go through before he starts to come across. One other thing we can notice here too is he takes the strings just like the forehand side and his strings will really point at the opponent as he follows through. He doesn't make the mistake of opening those strings unless he needs to for some reason, like he's directing the ball or hitting it really flat. He doesn't make the mistake of pointing those strings open unless he's doing it for the purpose of aiming the shot. And then again, just coming here from here, guys, look at the follow through, and then look how the legs start to straighten out at the end, right? And then he's gonna start recovering for the next shot. You can also see here one quick tip as well. Make sure your hands and the butt cap of your racket, so the cap of your racket, that logo, make sure it really finishes over that opposite shoulder when you finish the stroke and get those hands nice and loose and just kind of relaxed at the end of that. And there's really a ton of things to cover in this backhand technique. So if you feel like I left anything out that was a key, drop a comment in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video on Novak Djokovic's two-handed backhand technique. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps Tennis Unleashed continue to grow. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time. Go, go.